people need to understand every time humans try and travel to other planets trying to check out the environment or terraform it or do something in some way they always end up dealing with xenomorphs hey y'all i have officially partnered with boosteroid which is a global cloud gaming platform that provides cloud-based access to pc video games across devices and platforms you can play a vast range of both free-to-play games and payment required games all in one place without having to download the games to your device it is vital that you have good Wi-Fi connection in order to have the smoothest possible experience. And you can actually check your connection on the website using the Booster Word Speed Test. Click on my special link down in the description for more information. And follow my gaming channel where I'll be uploading videos of the games I play via Boosteroid. Hey y'all, it's Mel the Scientist. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be looking at how to terraform Venus. Now I'm really interested to see how that's going to happen because if you even, if you've looked up anything about Venus, you will see that it is hell on, oh I was about to say hell on Earth, but technically it's hell on Venus. <laughs> oh that's so stupid. Anyway, um, it's, it, it, it's hell incarnate. The atmosphere is literally carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid, and the very ground is enough to melt lead. So, I want to know how we're supposed to be able to terraform Venus. I am very interested to see, and I love Kurtz Gazot. I love them dearly. They're great. And if anyone has an explanation, a logical one, it would be them. So let's check it out. Leaving Earth to find new homes in space is an old dream of humanity and will sooner or later be necessary for our survival. The planet that gets the most attention is Mars, a small, toxic and energy poor planet that just about seems good enough for a colony of depressed humans huddled <laughs> in underground cities. But what if we think bigger? What if we take Venus, one of the most hostile and deadly places in the solar system, and turn it into a colony? Not by building lofty cloud cities, but by creating a proper second Earth. Let's it see how. It easier than you think. Is it? Venus is by far the hottest planet in the solar system, with a surface temperature of 460 degrees Celsius. Hot Aye. enough to melt lead. This heat is due to the most <laughs> extreme greenhouse effect in the solar system. Yes. CO2 is great at trapping heat, even a rise from 0.03% to 0.04% in Earth's atmosphere is heating up our planet right now. Venus's atmosphere is 97% CO2. Oh my god. Also, Venus's atmosphere is 93 times denser than Earth's. Standing yeah. on Venus's surface would feel like taking a dive about 900 meters deep into the ocean. The pressure would kill you instantly. Oh. It's a truly horrible place, so why should we even bother? First Good question. and foremost, Venus is almost as big as Earth and has 90% of its surface gravity. Surface gravity is a big problem when colonizing the solar system because it's very likely that long stays in low gravity places will have negative health effects. Venus's size means it could be the second largest habitat in the solar system. A new home for billions of humans and trillions of animals, with oceans, lush forests, and a beautiful blue sky. A properly terraformed Venus may be the most pleasant place to live outside of Earth. While we can't exactly terraform Venus today, a slightly more ambitious future version of us could take this project on. I know he did not just say slightly more ambitious. Humans are getting more exponentially more ambitious by the generation. On. It will take a few generations to complete and be a huge challenge like building the Great Pyramids was for our ancestors. But then, it's not like humans have never started projects that took more than a lifetime to complete. Okay, let's do it. Before anything else, we need to cool Venus down and remove the gas that makes up the extremely heavy atmosphere. How do we As do that? As mentioned, there's a lot of it. Around 465 million billion tons. How do we do that? Ugh. There are a few options. We could create giant solar collectors powering a huge array of laser beams that heat up the atmosphere so much that it's blasted into space. Although we would need thousands of times the entire power generating capacity of humanity and it would still take thousands of years to remove the atmosphere. <laughs> Another way is to sequester the atmosphere. 
binding the CO2 in different compounds through chemical reactions. We could mine elements like calcium or magnesium on Mercury and shoot them at Venus via mass driver systems, electric rails that make rockets unnecessary on smaller planets. The metals would combine to bind the CO2 into different carbonates basically forever. But the scale makes the whole thing impractical. We really we need several hundred billion tons of material to sequester the CO2 this way. Absolutely. Seems like a waste of material and might take too long. An equally ridiculous idea that could actually work is to put Venus in the shade, literally, by constructing a huge mirror to blot out the sun to just freeze the atmosphere. The mirror doesn't need to be complex or massive, just a very thin foil with a little structural support. <laughs> Building such a large flat surface so close to the sun will turn it effectively into a solar sail and push it out of position. So instead of one giant circular object, our mirror will consist of many different pieces. Annular slats of angled mirrors can reflect sunlight from one set of mirrors to the next. Mirrors would be angled, reflecting light from one to another until the light is redirected to the back, balancing the force on the front and holding them in position. After a few years of getting the infrastructure in place, things start slowly and then escalate. For the first few decades, the atmosphere slowly cools down but stays dense and deadly until after some 60 years, it reaches the critical temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. Suddenly, the great flood begins on Venus as CO2 turns to liquid at this pressure and begins to rain down. A constant global rainstorm of unbelievable proportions lasting 30 years. Yikes. The pressure and temperature suddenly begin to drop in unison. For almost a century, puddles turn into lakes and oceans. The surface temperature is now minus 56 degrees Celsius and the pressure has dropped to only seven times the pressure on Earth. Finally, at a really unpleasant minus 81 degrees Celsius, the CO2 oceans begin to freeze and the rain turns into snow. This leaves us with a frozen Venus covered in oceans as hard as rock and gigantic CO2 glaciers. What remains of the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen at about three times Earth's surface pressure. If you don't mind freezing and suffocating, you can now take a stroll over exactly. the surface. Exactly. <laughs> the frozen CO2 remains a now bit of a worth problem. it. At some point, we want to warm up the planet, but if we do, the CO2 ice will melt and fill up the atmosphere again. Yep. So we need some way to keep it from doing that. One is to simply cover it all with cheap plastic insulation and cover it up with ground up Venus rock or water oceans. Although some planetary scientists will be very stressed out about us building a new planet. This ain't it, fam. Exactly. Like that. <laughs> a few unfortunately timed volcanoes could melt a lot of CO2 at once and ruin everything. Another obvious solution is to shoot it all out into space and collect it into a small moon for storage and future use. We can make this more efficient by using mass drivers instead of rockets, but moving all that mass will still be a pretty intense challenge that will take some time to solve. Whatever we end up doing with the atmosphere, to move forward we need water, which we could get from ice moons. Europa, a moon of Jupiter, has twice as much water as Earth's oceans. Now, catching a moon and transporting it through the solar system is not exactly easy. So instead, it might be easier to cut chunks of ice off Europa with an army of construction drones and shoot them at Venus using more of those mass drivers. That is going to take so long. Space tethers could save us a lot of effort and energy here. We made a whole video explaining how they work, but in a nutshell, they are slings that can take a payload on <laughs> Not even ends. remotely to scale. <laughs> on Europa, they do most of the work needed to catapult our ice to Venus. The ice hits the Venus tethers, which gently drop it into the atmosphere, where it falls down as snow. In exchange, the Venus tethers get to catch CO2 ice shot up from below and accelerate it into orbit. We can remove excess nitrogen using this same method to further lower our atmospheric pressure. After a few decades or centuries, Venus would be covered by a nice, shallow, frozen ocean a few hundred meters deep. It would look extremely different from today. A few continents and countless islands have formed. This is beginning to look a bit like our planet. Now the last and most magnificent phase of terraforming begins, making the atmosphere breathable and adding life. Yes. First, we need light though, and we need to heat the planet up again. A Venus day is 2,802 hours long, more than 116 Earth days. 
So if we just remove that is so wild. Every time I hear that, it is just I can't even imagine that. I don't want to. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Move our giant mirror, we would grill half of our planet. Even without the massive atmosphere, temperatures would reach unbearable levels. The simplest way to create a day-night cycle and let some energy in again is with another set of mirrors to illuminate our continents and melt our water oceans, which would let us completely control how much energy we get and where it goes. The atmosphere is now mostly made up of nitrogen and basically devoid of oxygen. So the first inhabitants will likely be trillions and trillions of cyanobacteria, which can get photosynthesizing and release oxygen. We know that they can quickly turn around the atmosphere of a planet because billions of years ago, they were probably responsible for turning the toxic atmosphere of our young Earth into an atmosphere with enough oxygen for more complex animal life. But not mm -hmm. only that, cyanobacteria can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and turn it into nutrients that can be used by living beings. This way, they will essentially fertilize our dead ocean water and prepare it for more complex organisms. On land, our colonists need to grind down some of the former Venusian surface to make soil for nitrogen-fixing plants to grow on. Eventually, billions of trees would spread, creating large forests covering massive parts of the continents. Venus would turn green. To speed things up, CO2 would be strategically released to supply the plants and cyanobacteria. Areas already covered with plants could get extra daylight from our orbital mirrors, so the plants would be active for most of each day. Maybe we won't have to do this with the same plants and animals we know today. <laughs> As genetic engineering matures and our understanding of genetics and the machinery of life expands, we might just engineer life as we need it. All in all, it would take That's several a dangerous thousand statement. years to make the atmosphere breathable by humans. In the meantime, you could stroll around with nothing more than regular clothes and an oxygen mask. Settlers would enjoy a vast new planet filled with resources and bathed in sunlight. They might think of new ways to use the vast amounts of carbon dioxide ice and nitrogen orbiting in space above. Industrial processes, rocket fuel, or even boosting the terraforming of another planet like tiny Mars. Venus is fully terraformed. Animals roam through vast ecosystems. Cities are being constructed. Billions of settlers and their descendants make this world their home. They will see images of the past, how Venus was once the most hostile planet around, how it took hundreds of years to freeze hell and to ship in the oceans, and another few thousand years to make it possible to breathe freely. They will barely be able to believe it. Okay, maybe it's not that easy to terraform Venus, and a lot of things must go right for this future to become reality. Yes. But it is possible, and with technology that is within the reach of a motivated and slightly more advanced humanity that wants to venture into space. The only thing that's slightly stopping it advanced? is our imagination. And huh. that, at least, is a problem that's easy to overcome. Yeah, even after having all this information, I still do not think it is worth it. And I sincerely hope humanity does not become that delusional and that bold to try and terraform other planets. I think they just need to focus on getting this planet that we already have right and stop disrespecting it. Simple as that. Sure, hypothetically, this could happen, but why would you? <laughs> I mean, Venus is just not the one. It's not the one. It's too much work. There'd be absolutely no need to even attempt terraforming Venus. For what, for what purpose? There's no reason. <laughs> like, treat Earth right. Be better. She deserves better. Also, like, I don't know why people don't understand. I watch a lot of movies, right? People don't understand every time you try and go to different planets, exoplanets. Well, exoplanets are not. People need to understand. Every time humans try and travel to other planets, trying to check out the environment or terraform it or do something in some way they always end up dealing with xenomorphs xenomorphs are always everywhere causing trouble man like people don't understand this <laughs> like i don't get it you will come across these types of creatures if you go on these expeditions doesn't anyone watch any movies goodness gracious like you come on now 
educate yourselves. You're going to come across some freaking thing of nature like that every time. It never works out. Stay on Earth. That's where we're supposed to be. <laughs> ah. Ay, ay, ay. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about this video, what you currently think about it, if you truly think it's possible to happen, if you want this kind of thing to happen. Um, I have no opinion, even though I kind of fully just expressed it. <laughs> I, I, I'm saying I have no opinion because like I'm not even thinking about doing this, so I just don't even have an opinion that to even like contribute to a conversation about this because i'm just thinking about other stuff <laughs> um but if it's that important to you let me know in the comments and uh yeah so if you like the video please be sure to like share and subscribe to the channel i also have my gaming channel mel the gamer where i play a lot of mostly horror games because i'm an october baby and i live for horror games and movies and most of them are alien franchise games so they're super scary but I also have some other stuff on the docket to play as well, so go ahead and check that out. I also do have a Patreon. I have my first videos on it already, so you can go ahead and check that out. I'll put that link in the description. It's pretty much just going to be me doing like games and puzzles and st stuff that uh, would kind of mess up my algorithm on YouTube. So I'll just put those videos on Patreon and you'll hear me singing like to Disney songs, finishing the lyric, guessing the logo having fun with that or going crazy over something that just got on my nerves all of that is on there there'll be more videos too so go ahead and check that out thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video peace